Start with Barney. Remember the words, don't you, Barney? It's not on forest. But the butcher and farmer lived here all his life, my dad. I was born in Wigginton. Uh, when they were little, they had to go to um, uh, the sent them, they went to Sunday school or anything here. They sent them to, uh, no, it's Northern Scientific now. It was a chapel sort of thing. They had to go there to Sunday school. Um, my mother's family I went to church, always, but a lot of them in Haxby churchyard. No. Um. My mother's ashes are it's my dad's grave, he, he was buried and then because he wouldn't say what he wanted so we just said, oh we better bury him because Fletcher family didn't like cremation. <laughs> he would never say, do as you like, do as you like. My mother said, oh, I want cremating. So we put her ashes in there. So the same should happen to me. If it doesn't, well, I'll have to go up there. take you upstairs because I'm going to show you some of the the frontals that, that are on the altar. There's four of them and they were given in memory of Dorothy Boothman and they are absolutely beautiful and they were all handmade by some ladies that do all that type of work for the York Minster and they are, are beautiful. Right I'll show you all these because these go with the the things. It's green at the moment because the green frontal, if you notice, on the front of the altar. And then the vicars will wear green. And it's like the four different seasons of the year that they, you know, the church calendar. They have different colours for different, different things. I mean, apparently all this it's all real gold, red. Four different colours. And they all live in these. And this was given in memory of uh, John Barker. And there's the purple ones. I mean, they're all I'm done. They're beautiful, aren't they? Uh, Mr. Bell, Charlie Bell, is buried over there, and Annie Dickinson there. She did a lot for church, she was born in Wigginton, but then she left because she went into service and then she came back when she retired. Hmm. I don't know when that was, I can't read it from here. I think she was a good age. My dad, she went to school with my dad. Hmm. Ah, oh, yeah. Roger. I'm leading the uh, 
uh, program for the 150th year celebrations because it's this church has been here this church building has been here since 1860 obviously we're in 2010 now so that's 150 years we felt it was really important to mark 150 years and we wondered about how we could do that whether it was one big event sometime in the year or whether we should do something each month uh, to make it a real uh, celebration of the year. So we've had a team of people working together planning a different event each month and again that's been an enormous amount of hard work but it's gone really really well and uh, we've, well, we feel that we've made the church uh, known in the community and uh, again brought a lot of people into the uh, various uh, events we've held for example, we had uh, a Victorian weekend and a lot of people came up to join us for that. And many of us were dressed in Victorian costumes, so it set the atmosphere. And uh, an old favourite that's been going for a number of years now is our Scrubs Dog Show. And again, that's really well attended, uh, not just by people from church, but from people in the community who very much look forward to it. So it's been a, a great effort and... Uh, in December we do have the Archbishop coming so that really will be the highlight of the year. Well I hope <laughs> sincerely that this is going to be here for another 150 years or longer because I, I feel that um, this building is something to be cherished, we do look after it and um, it's, it, it is to me a focal point of the village.